Hey, are you a business owner, entrepreneur, or professional? If so, we want you to apply to be a featured guest on our show. My name is Adam Torres, and I host the Mission Matters series of podcasts. I've recorded over 3,000 episodes, and we are just getting started. How do you know if you'd be a good guest to be on the show? Well, only one way to find out, and that's to apply, but I'm going to let you in on a little secret. We want guests that have a story to tell, guests with a brand, a product, or a service that can benefit my audience and listeners. If this sounds like you, go to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. I'd love to talk to you and get to know more about your story. Again, head on over to missionmatters.com and click on Be Our Guest to Apply. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Business Podcast, your source for all things business. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres to keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Jeff Pijak on the line, and he is CEO over at Ultimate Ninjas and chairman of UNX. Jeff, welcome to the show. Thanks, Adam. Appreciate it. Excited to be here. All right, Jeff. So I'm excited to get into today's show. So the American Ninja Warrior craze. I mean, I've seen this show. I'm sure many of the people watching this, I mean, who hasn't seen it? And you're doing some amazing things that that are maybe inspired by it, but you're taking it to the next level, in my opinion. So I'm excited to get into that. We're going to talk about Ultimate Ninja and what you're doing there. And also we'll get into UNX and then I'm not going to spoiler it. So everybody, I want you to watch to the end, but um, we got some big news about uh, about let's just say a show that's coming up also um, for UNX. Uh, but Jeff, uh, first off, I'd like to get a little. I like. I hope you don't take offense to this, but were you a, like, were are you a super sports guy? And are you into like, are you training for some one of these sports or OCR or like, how'd you get sucked into this? Yeah, I mean, thanks, Adam, for having me on the show. First of all, but. You know, long, long time ago, I was, uh, you know, the, the best athlete in, uh, in the state of Michigan, right? So the older you get, the better you used to be. But no, uh, American Ninja Warrior really kind of came about in my life due to the show. Um, you know, we have two young daughters and we love sports and entertainment, um, especially on a Sunday night. Um, so when we were looking for family friendly shows to watch, American Ninja Warrior is on its 12th season on NBC. Uh, so nothing better than to sit down and watch a show that you can literally get excited about. And then you look over and your wife's getting excited and your daughters are getting excited. So there's very few shows like that out there. Um, and we just took a liking to it from the beginning and uh, off we went. So That's amazing. And so as a business, let's go a little bit further into your background, because uh, you're going on your of your second season, of course, on UNX. And uh, but like, how did you get involved with this as a business? Because I find it like it's an extremely interesting model. And we're going to do a little bit of a deep dive in there because there's a lot of a lot of entrepreneurs watching, thinking like, hmm, why? Why did Jeff do this? So tell us a little right, more right. about that. Well, very not unlikely from a from a career standpoint, my my background is in healthcare administration. Um, I spent 20 years in healthcare administration and different facets of business uh, with regards to healthcare. But I always had that entrepreneurial bug in my ear. And when we, you know, as I mentioned, we had kids, we're looking for a business model that we can actually uh, be proud of with our kids and use it with our kids uh, on a daily basis. We looked at different business models in the kids space. Uh, There's a lot of uh, obviously entertainment and exercise uh, businesses related. Um, uh, But when we thought about American Ninja Warrior and how to blend kids into it, that's when the light bulb went off. Mm. No, I love it. I love it. So really family friendly entertainment and, and being able to 
you know, build that community within your own household that crosses generation, I th- generations. Um, I think right. that's interesting because a lot of content out there nowadays, I would argue, and maybe it always has been, who knows, it might be a little bit polarizing or it's, you know, one, one, one piece of content's made for one generation, another's made for another, and that's just the way it is. But if you can get everybody together, all the better. And I think right. that's a, a great way to bring up Ultimate Ninja. So, cause that's what I see you're doing there. Um, you're just, you're just doing it in person, of course. So tell us a little bit more about, about that concept. Right. Um, obviously lots of uh, options for kids these days on their phones, you know, doing things that aren't healthy for them. And when we thought about American Ninja Warrior and how we can basically build a course similar to the show American Ninja Warrior and have kids have an outlet for healthy exercise. That was kind of the genesis of it. Um, When we initially opened, my business model pretty much a month before we opened only included entertainment. Mm. Within Two weeks of opening, I met an actual American Ninja Warrior that's been on the show. Uh, We hit it off. And next thing you know, he he basically said to me, Jeff, there's an audience for kids that want to race an obstacle course, you know, from a sports standpoint. I think we can build a class volume, um, a substantial class volume where kids come in on a regular basis and learn OCR, which is obviously a term obstacle course racing but in a short course format. So initially the business plan really didn't involve, you know, Monday through Friday having classes at four or five, six and seven, having a little class in the morning. It was basically an entertainment venue to compete with the likes of trampoline parks Mm. and bounce house, you know, businesses. That was the, the genesis, but what was really the you know, what it's turned into is essentially a, a seven day a week operation with roughly a thousand kids per location that are coming in on a, you know, OCR training basis or an entertainment basis. So essentially we, we go, we are a bifurcated business model of entertainment on weekends where we have birthday parties and open play. And then during the week we have adult and uh, children's fitness, which is essentially beginning advanced all the way to elite travel teams where we have literally kids that try out and travel the country and compete against each other. So it's, it's one of those things where you don't really know how it's going to end up, but it turned out pretty good. That's absolutely amazing. I mean, what a story. And uh, let's go. I want to talk more about OCR specifically because uh, I think because I've seen the pictures and obviously we uh, like I've seen the website. I've seen what you've done. Um, You're located in in Chicago in that area. I want to go further into that. But I think the courses and just what you're doing, it's freaking amazing. It's really cool. Yeah. So our business model essentially Um, is to bring in top OCR athletes Mm. that either are on American Ninja Warrior or just do different types of OCR races incessantly and have those professionals teach the kids the same techniques. Wow! And so when you're seeing what you see on American Ninja Warrior, a lot of what we do on in the gyms on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, on a monthly basis is to build strength, build confidence, work on agility, work on balance, work on upper body strength. So all the things that kids really need these days, obviously, um, you know, all those things that I wish I, I had when I was a kid and I could do, you know, right now, probably 10 pull-ups, but some of these kids are you know, doing 30 pull-ups without any problem. And they've been at our gyms now. We've had kids that have been at our gyms from the beginning that are still there that came at nine or 10 years old and now they're working there and they're still taking classes. So it's been fun, been real fun to watch. You're making me jealous over here, Jeff. I'm like, this is like one of those, like, I wish I had it when I was growing up moments. I'm like, when I was growing up in Michigan, because I'm from Michigan too. You mentioned you're from Michigan. When I was going to Michigan, we got our exercise from shoveling snow, right? Right, right. And you know, you're not, you're not alone. We get emails weekly, daily from people that are ex-gymnasts or people that are training to be on the show American Ninja Warrior. So it, our gym is inundated with people that are just 
dialed in to OCR and this mm-hmm. whole short course run. Um, and then, uh, as I mentioned, add on the birthday parties at the end of the week, um, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. These kids are five, six, seven years old. They watch this show. They walk in mm-hmm. and their parents and there's Jesse Lebrec, and everybody just stops, you know, and freezes. And, you know, it's literally like their hero that they've watched for five years on American Ninja Warrior, who, by the way, Jesse just had the best season ever as a female on American Ninja Warrior, the, you know, this season, season 12. Um, but these are their idols. And these are great idols as a parent that I want my kids to look up to. Totally have FOMO over here, fear of missing out. I'm like, and then you get to go actually train and see the actual people you're watching on TV doing this. I mean, this is amazing because I like, I mean, what they're doing, obviously just amazing in general, but then to actually have access or even be able to possibly take classes. I mean, you really created something special. Yeah, it's, it's a community now. It's Mm -hmm. a sport. You know, whereas that original business model was, hey, let's just provide an outlet uh, for kids to go and have some fun. Now it's turned into something of a movement, Um, not just in Chicago, but nationwide and worldwide. We've got, you know, hundreds of ninja gyms. And when I started the first one in 2016, there was only a handful, maybe less than three gyms that focused on kids. And now the entire world is building out gyms, you know, related, very similar to our business model, Ultimate Ninjas, which is great. I mean, I, I love it that they're doing it. I'm planning to do it too, you know, to grow our our, our model uh, throughout the country, throughout the world uh, in a very positive way, so. Let's talk a little bit more about UNX. So we, we'll, we'll, um, so UNX is going into its uh, second season. Uh, let's first maybe get into the league and then and then we'll talk a little bit more about the show. Right. Um, So UNX was basically spawned from a lot of American Ninja Warrior veterans that have been on the show for years. And make no mistake, they love American Ninja Warrior, but they also know in order to elevate this sport of ninja to a competitive standpoint that includes Olympics, that includes, you know, broadcast on, on major networks, uh, we have to legitimize the sport of ninja. American Ninja Warrior, again, for all of its great aspects, we we love American Ninja Warrior. It's still a reality show. You mm-hmm. still have to apply, and it's not a merit-based competition, whereas other s- traditional sports, such as football and basketball, those are merit-based, right? You win, you move on, you try out for the team. Um, in a sense, American Ninja Warrior is a little bit of a hybrid between um, a reality show and a sport. Some of the contestants are invited back. Some of the top contestants in the world that I know personally are not invited back because they may not have a great story, right? Mm -hmm. They may not be able to, you know, have that audience that um, wants to hear a a feel-good story. So the ninja athletes actually were the ones that were asking for UNX and, and quite frankly, demanding it. So I huddled with a number of ninja athletes you know, the top ones that you all know of, right? Jesse Lebrecht, Daniel Gill, Grant McCartney, Ethan Swanson, Chris Deganji. And it took a while, but we launched UNX last season, uh, its first season, and uh, it's it's had tremendous uh, impact in a very short amount of time. Tell us a little bit more about the format. So the format of uh, of the sport itself for people that are being introduced to it for the first time. Right. Easy, easy format. Right. So one thing that we did do is we dropped down the minimum age limit to 13 to join UNX and actually try to qualify to become into one of our majors. So essentially, we travel the country and we have what we call qualifiers at ninja gyms around the country. If you qualify, you move into what we call a major. So then we have four majors throughout the season. And then what happens is those majors, you accumulate points, kind of like a FedEx cup in golf. Mm -hmm. So you accumulate points and the top females and the top males in each category uh, advance to the ultimate ninja championship, the UNX championship um, based on a merit, right? So based on their points throughout the season. So if you lose, or if I'm sorry, if you 
if you basically tank uh, or fall on your first qualifier uh, to get to that first major, you still have a chance to get to the first, to the second major and the third major and the fourth major. So the athletes themselves devise the competition. Um, and I love that because it's for athletes and it's by athletes, but it essentially gives people the chance to get to that ultimate UNX championship, which is essentially, you know, what every sport is, you know, to try to win the season, to try to win a championship. And, and that's all based on your hard work throughout the season. Wow. It's pretty amazing. And so what has been the, the, re and, and also when you say this is a community, what I love about this is that this even expands past your, uh, past your immediate area at the moment. Now, obviously I want you to have thousands of gyms, right? Worldwide, but you're, you're also partnering with other ninja gyms. So in other facilities and really creating this whole ecosystem of community that um, to me, I think it's just unique. It sounds unique. I can just imagine like, especially if you're a kid growing up and in like some of them that you mentioned that started early on and then you go up, it sounds to me like just this thing you can grow up. It keeps kids um, obviously healthy, motivated, focused, these things, the same benefits that maybe playing sports in school or organized or other things, some of those benefits that, that they had um, in a person's long-term life, I feel like the, it has the same thing, except they don't necessarily have to stop. This isn't like football or basketball where you're like, okay, you're out of high school now, you might get hurt or something like that. It's like, no, you can continually get better. Right, right. And, you know, you touched on that a little bit, but the, one of the most compelling articles that I've read about Ninja is that there was a booth at the USA Gymnastics Convention a couple of years ago, and the most crowded booth at that convention was the ninja booth. So all of the gymnasts, uh, the traditional, you know, athletes such as track and field and gymnastics that thrive with that same skill level that you need, mm -hmm. you know, they're all kind of moving over to ninja because it is that lifelong sport that you don't have to essentially slow down or stop, you know, when your teens or in your early twenties, you can continue. We've got 50, 60 year olds that are competing on the show from our gym. So that community is, is really, really special. And one other thing about it is, you know, we talk about soccer dads and soccer moms. Now there's ninja dads and ninja moms, right? That are wearing their kids' t-shirts, uh, proud of their kids and how they compete um, both locally and nationally. Last, uh, I believe it was March, um, the National Ninja League, which is a recreational league, um, they had their finals down in Charlotte, North Carolina, and there were 5,000 kids that flew in with their families to a big, you know, com competition that didn't exist three years ago. So really cool stuff. 5,000 kids. That's 5, a phenomenon. That's crazy. Like, right, five, right. I can't even imagine that. And it didn't, and it just, and it hasn't been along that long. And I mean, this isn't 20 years old in terms no, of, no, it's, it's, I mean, it's been around for 12 seasons on American Ninja Warrior, but we've seen a huge influx of interest in the past three years, if not two and one year. Everybody's walking into our gym now and realizing that their kid doesn't have to play a traditional sport to really, really be challenged, get healthy exercise and be in a community that's so uplifting. So I see some 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 similarities. I mean, there's there's obviously some differences too, but uh, I see some similarities in maybe the CrossFit model and how they grew that, or maybe loose more a little bit more loosely UFC. Um, uh, it's a diff different angle, but different uh, but definitely CrossFit. You can I can see the similarities. So you see the gyms, well, you see them all over the place, right? Then you also see the national competitions, um, and you're like, and then you you have all the qualifying. You have to go. I mean. I think, and I mean, could this be as big as CrossFit? Do you think these gyms and everything else? Because that thing is, I mean, it's just taken off. Well, that's the goal. Uh, it's not something that, you know, is, is going to change overnight, but the movement is already begun and you can see how these gyms are growing and growing beyond, you know, anybody's expectations. Of course, with uh, Ultimate Ninjas, uh, we cater to kids. So we're, we're starting kids as early as six years old, whereas CrossFit, you're doing a lot of, you know, a lot of body yeah. you know, manipulations that the kids probably shouldn't take on until they're 
in their teens, if not in their twenties, because it's a rough sport CrossFit, but everything with Ninja is basically body weight, right? So mm-hmm. you're, you're not really <clears throat> sacrificing their health to get into this sport on an early age. And like I said earlier, there's kids that have been with us for years now. And I know for a fact, they'll be with us for the rest of their lives. Um, it's just an amazing parallel to, you know, UFC and CrossFit, but, but it blends in a little bit more community, a little bit more on the kids aspect than, than those sports. Um, I love those sports as well, but I can see the same gyms, sport, all coming together to form, you know, what essentially is something that didn't exist three or four years ago, very similar to CrossFit and UFC in their infancy. Yeah. And I, and, and I, I guess, and this is just my personal bias. Like I like to watch UFC and CrossFit on TV, but I never get that internal urge. Like I want to try it when you oh, see yeah. like some, when you see the, like what you're doing over at UNX, it's like, could I do that? Like even just asking that little seed of a question of, can I do that? Or mm, it, it just seems like you want to do it. Like it's fun. It's, uh, and to me, it's not fun to get to do some of maybe those other things. I'm like, Oh, that yeah. looks scary. I don't know. I'm like, get hurt if I try that or I'm not supposed to be doing that. Well, we have, so this looks like, wow, can I do that? Mm, uh, maybe I could, I, I could probably do that a little faster, which I know I can't, but you know, maybe I think I can. Yeah, so we've had tons of interest from an investment standpoint, as well as just, hey, I want to get involved. And it's not the kids, the parents walk in and they are like, give me the, you know, let's go. And so we started actually an adult fitness program called UltaFit that essentially mirrors our Ultimate Ninjas workouts, but for adults. Um, And so a lot of Parents, you know, are either coming in for your general hit classes where you're not touching the obstacles or what we call OC fusion, which is essentially a hit class with obstacles involved. So we've got a whole community now of UltaFit fanatics that are at our gyms that are wearing those shirts proudly. But what we did do is segment out Ultimate Ninjas and UltaFit. Mm -hmm. So they were separate brands within the company because a lot of adults want to wear those shirts. They want to go to the Spartan races or the Tough Mudders or compete in National Ninja and wear their UltaFit shirt. Essentially, we've made a a, a parallel community within each of our gyms. No, I mean, it sounds amazing. And I get it. Like the UltaFit, like it's like that's cool. Like and I and when you said that, the first thing I thought about was those other um, organizations you're saying where everybody wears the shirts. No, it's it's like a, it's your community and it's fun and you train with people and you get to know and you get to support each other and uplift everyone. I mean, I, I just think it's a great movement. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing is adults really absolutely need to stretch before they go on these obstacles because... <laughs> Your muscles, you know, they, they're they going to be stretched out quite a bit differently than what a normal gym gives you. So we always, always emphasize stretching and making sure you're completely comfortable, you know, with obstacle course training before you go on some of these demanding obstacles like wing nuts and mm-hmm. you know, jumping spiders. And it's it's pretty strenuous. So typically adults start out in that general hit class which doesn't involve obstacles and they progress into it but then there's other adults from spartan race that come in you know we had i think there was a uh, one of the final uh, competitions in spartan race was up in minnesota a couple or crossfit games a couple years ago and we had everybody that diverted their flights into chicago to come and train at our gyms prior to those competitions up in Minnesota because they wanted to get that obstacle experience before they, you know, before they hit the course up there. The difference between us and them is that we're more short course based. A couple minutes is a good run, you know, two, three minutes. And that's an intensive two, three minutes versus a Spartan or a Tough Mudder, which is a little bit more endurance based, you know, one hour, two hour races. Very similar in nature, but ours is a lot more impactful um, you know, fast, quick, right? Stretching is good. I recommend stretching before these interviews, yeah. Jeff. <laughs> I I Got to get my stretch in. Um, I'm in. Uh, and it sounds fun. I'm like, next time I'm in Chicago, I am 100% going to visit you at the gym. When you said that they, when they flew in and did it, I'm like, I don't know why, but I, I want to go too. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. it's going to be awesome. 
Uh, I want to talk about UNX and, and get a little bit further into the season and the show aspect, because I want all the viewers for this show to definitely go check it out because you're doing something special, really special over there. So yep. maybe tell us a little bit about what, what took place in season one to get us kicked off. So uh, just a series of fortunate events, right? So we, we, we strategized, we launched UNX, we raised a little bit of money to get season one off the ground. Um, but, you know, as I said, those fortunate events started to happen. We met um, a gentleman by the name of Howard Bolter, who has significant experience in the OTT sports and entertainment world. He introduced us to, and Howard became our chief operating officer of, of UNX. Uh, Howard was really well connected into the sports, you know, production community and introduced us to Hugh Arian, who owns Echo Entertainment. Hugh loves what we do. He's, you know, Echo does, is pretty much the, the, the 800 pound gorilla with regards to action sports. They do AVP volleyball. Uh, Winter Olympics, um, X Games. So when we moved into um, you know our, our first season, uh, Hugh and having Echo and Howard behind us from a production value was a huge win for us. And lo and behold, others started to notice. Um, so as of right now, um, we are now being broadcast on Whistle TV, which is a OTT VOD network uh, throughout the nation, uh, throughout the world. And, um, you know, that's season one. And right now we're moving towards filming season two. And then, you know, our aspirations are obviously beyond Whistle. But I tell you, for one season to be on Whistle TV and Whistle Sports, it's an amazing accomplishment for what these guys have done. Yeah, and the, and the quality of the content. I mean, when you see the, the production value and what you're doing, it's not, I mean, it's something special. And I think that makes it, that makes it quite, um, it makes it quite addictive. Like you want to watch the whole season. You want to see what's happening next, but the quality of the content, the way it's shot, the production value of it. I mean, to me, and, and by the way, congratulations on getting distribution through Whistle TV, because that's not easy. And as, especially after a season, like I was like, when I, when I read that in the show notes, I'm like, wait a minute, what? And what else are they doing? And I'm like, man, you guys are on fire. Um, so now we're going into uh, a season two. Uh, so the first season's done. Um, first thing, like, what was the response from the community and otherwise on season one? Because I'm just curious on kind of how everybody took it in and how the people that participated, by the way, because what an amazing platform that you're also providing for them. Just circling back to what you said earlier, like these athletes want a platform that it's a competition, not not just and I'm not saying it's a bad thing, but not not real, not the hybrid side of things. Right. Right. You know, this response has been amazing, um, but you know, think about where this could go. Uh, you know, if you watch UNX, it's basically filmed in one of our Ultimate Ninjas gyms at a high production value, but obviously not at the grandiose levels of American Ninja Warrior or other, you know, major, major sports, right? That's our aspiration. That's where we want to go to. But I think when you watch one episode or you see the entire season, you can vision, it's easy to vision, you know, where this could go and, and how big this could be when you have traditional sports, you know, as, as much in demand as they are, this is a family friendly sport, right? That involves both kids, boys, girls, men, and women. And as I mentioned, you, you, you touched on, you know, the, 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 how it's being accepted in the community, you know, Part of our entry level was that 13 year old and above, right? And so you've got now 13 year olds, men and women competing against the likes of Jesse Lebrecht and Daniel Gill. <laughs> and so when you see that happening real time and these girls are doing amazing things, some of the you know 13 year olds were actually outperforming you know these 20, 30 year old competitors on American Ninja Warrior. So the community, has exploded and most of it is from that younger you know younger population that needs that outlet to watch and i'll just say you know nationally i have you know extreme confidence of where unx can go but also internationally there's now 
20 plus countries throughout you know the world that are filming um, very similar shows to American Ninja Warrior. There's Vietnamese Ninja Warrior. There's um, Australian Ninja Warrior. There's Israeli Ninja Warrior. There's you know German Ninja Warrior. So the demand is not just there in America, but throughout the country. Sasuke has been in Japan now, and that's the you know the original show of American Ninja Warrior for 34 seasons, 32 or 34 seasons. Wow. So it's not going anywhere. This isn't a fad that's you know dying away. It's only strengthening. That's absolutely amazing. Uh, so now you're going into season uh, one. You mentioned you raised some money, or, or season two. You mentioned you raised some money for season one. Um, are you looking at, or are you bringing in outside investors for either the UNX or the gyms? Like, I, like tell us a little bit more about the model. And a lot, lot of business owners, entrepreneurs, and executives watching. Hey, some might want to get involved, so you might be getting some phone calls. But tell us a little bit more about about that. Right. Looking for uh, certainly a, a strategic partner uh, to help us steer this ship. I realize how special it is. There's a lot of people that are involved in Ultimate Ninjas and UNX that have to basically quit their regular careers and devoted their lives to making this work. So I understand my bandwidth can only go so far. My knowledge and expertise can only go so far coming from the healthcare world of 20 years, I'm doing my best, but I'm realizing how big this could become. So I am absolutely interested in finding a strategic partner that has both interest in expansion of brick and mortar, but also the sport of ninja. Now that's not easy, right? There's a lot of people out there that are interested in brick and mortar expansion, franchise expansion, which we're, we're very much into. Um, but we also are very interested in expanding the sport and getting to that you know, parallel universe of brick and mortar and sport, very similar to CrossFit or UFC. So I'd love to speak with anybody that has interest, but I'd love to find that strategic partner. There's a lot of people that have already come our way that are interested in writing a check, but, you know, we want that strategic partner um, just as much as we need, you know, that check. Um, the, the money's great, but I'm more interested in finding someone that can help you know, grow this with everything that we have on the line and all the people that are involved. Now, that's exciting. So, so overall, if uh, what's next, like what is going to be a, a, a good rest of the year, the good rest of the next couple of years for you? Like what if you had your, you know, your kind of dream game plan going forward and uh, just let's dream for a moment. Like how could right. this thing be over the next couple of years? Right. Um, Easily what's next is franchising. So I'm in active discussion, even during this difficult time of COVID with uh, individuals throughout the country and throughout the world. Um, we're working on you know expansion, the franchise route versus our traditional corporate owned. Um, as we all know, these massive gyms are really, you know, really seven day a week operations with a lot of activity. And I would love to have engaged franchisees that want to embrace, you know, that culture. It's hard for me to be in five gyms, let alone 50. So to do this, you know, on a franchise model makes complete sense. I've literally two weeks ago spoke to someone in Egypt about buying the rights to Ultimate Ninjas in the entire Middle East. So that interest is there, and that's kind of where we're headed uh, from a brick and mortar standpoint. From a UNX standpoint, you know, if we're talking, you know, where we want to get to eventually is, you know, someday find us on ESPN. Um, you know, watching the entire season, um, I think that that's certainly within reach. ESPN is 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 diversifying away from traditional sports. You're watching anything from you know, handball to volleyball to, uh, I've, saw, I've seen an, uh, an electrician championship. And I said that right, an elect electrician championship on ESPN2. So if there's room for electricians to be on a stage and try to wire a house as quickly as they can for a championship, I think there's certainly room for UNX, especially with, you know, a pretty validated business plan by 12 seasons of American Ninja Warrior. 
Absolutely amazing. I love it. And I and I'm excited to do this interview with you because I'm gonna look back at this and I'm saying, I remember Jeff doesn't take my phone call anymore, but I remember talking to him once upon a time. <laughs> no, no, you know, that won't be me, but I, I you'll go onto our websites under UNX, you won't see my picture. I'm extremely happy to have people like Jesse and Chris Deganji and all the athletes representing us. I'm happy to talk to you, Adam. Happy to talk to you at any t- any time, but it's certainly not me. I'm I'm happy to be a part of it. Absolutely amazing. Uh, so, in terms of uh, geography, um, you meant so I know you're in Chicago, and I, I know there's some people listening. We have a good we have a good following in Illinois. Um, tell us a little bit more about the geography, where people can get connected with the gyms, um, website where they can watch the show. Like, give us that kind of contact info. Right. It's Really, it's as simple as it sounds, www.ultimateninjas.com. Um, you, there you'll find all the information with regards to our uh, community, both kids and adults. Um, in addition, uh, UNX is unxnow.com. Uh, that is uh, you know, basically available uh, you, where you can watch the shows on UNX or go to YouTube and find uh, a lot of content that you can find on Whistle as well. But if you're very interested in binge watching, just head on over to UNX and and find those season one competitions as well. Uh, we have locations in uh, downtown Chicago near Wrigley Field, uh, Glenview, which is on the North Shore, uh, Libertyville, which is basically on the border of Wisconsin. And then we go out west to Naperville. And finally, we have our fifth location in St. Louis, which is in the suburb of uh, Chesterfield, uh, just outside of downtown St. Louis. Jamie Ron, who's a big, big personality on American Ninja Warrior, is running the St. Louis location. Jesse Lebrecht runs our Naperville location. Mike Salenzi, Michael Torres, Derek Pavoni, they're all seasoned veterans um, in this short course race that we're talking about. And then finally, Chris Deganji is our CEO of UNX. And Chris has been on American Ninja Warrior for seven, eight seasons now. So. Fantastic. And we're going to get Chris on another episode, right? Because I want, I, want, I want to go further into some of these athlete stories and hear. I want to hear from the ninja side of things what it sounds like. So you're going to have to set that up for me, okay? I'd love to. Chris is a great guy. He's obviously uh, engaged to Jesse Lebrecht. So there's a power couple there. You know, you talk about power couples in sports. You got Chris Deganji and Jesse Lebrecht as pretty much, you know, the the worldwide faces of American Ninja Warrior right now. And wow, Ninja absolutely Disney. amazing. Right. I love it. And, and, and they're working and they're working with Ultimate Ninja and UNX. So can't get any better than that. So no, no. I, and they're a great team and amazing people. Fantastic. Well, Jeff, really appreciate you coming on the show today and sharing more about your story, the background, what you're doing over at UNX. Everybody, we're going to definitely leave. Uh, I'll make sure to leave in the in the show notes and otherwise we'll put um, links, all that other stuff. I want you to go check out season one and get ready for season two also on UNX. And of course, if you're in that Illinois area, um, Chicago area, then definitely go check out these gyms. I know I'm going to check it out the next time I'm in, I'm in Chicago. So um, thanks again for that. Jeff. And to the audience, as always, thank you for tuning in. Uh, If this is your first time watching, don't forget, hit the subscribe button. We'd love to have you be a a second time viewer and a third time and stick with us long term. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Business, definitely hit the subscribe button. But more importantly, leave us some comments in the video. Love to connect with you and, and get engaged over on that YouTube community. Always love to connect with the audience there. And Jeff, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been fun. My pleasure. So hope to see you soon.